This may be controversial, but I have to explain what's happening with Amber Heard's opening brief and why it is not really a big deal. Hi there, my name is Catherine. I'm a lawyer and I also think differently. Based on the rules of the Virginia Court of Appeal, the appellant's opening briefs are due on November 2nd, 2022. If you want to know how that came about, go ahead and check out my other video where I talk about how the court and how the parties calculate all of that deadline. There are two appellants in the case of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. That is, one is Johnny Depp as an appellant and Amber Heard is an appellant as well. Both of them separately have their own appeals. That's why both of their opening briefs were due on November 2nd. What happened on November 2nd? We saw that Johnny Depp filed his opening brief timely, and then we didn't see any filing from Amber Heard, and everyone was wondering what happened. This is what happened. On October 13, Amber Heard and her lawyers asked the court for an extension of time to file their opening brief. Amber Heard is entitled to request an extension of time. Even Johnny Depp is entitled to that as well. Both of them are entitled to do that under Rule 5A19B4. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. 5A19B4 states that motions for extension to these briefing deadlines must be filed no later than 10 days after the expiration of the deadline. In reading that rule, it actually says that Amber Heard even had up to 10 days after November 2nd to request an extension of time. Here, Amber Heard requested extension on October 13th, so that was plenty of time before her November 2nd deadline, original deadline, to file her opening brief. You might be wondering, why is anyone going to ask for an extension of time? Let me explain that. First, it is not uncommon for lawyers to ask for an extension of time, especially when they're trying to brief a very lengthy argument. Second, here in Amber Heard's case, I think her lawyers requested an extension of time because they are new appellate lawyers of Amber Heard. We know that Rodden Bourne has been Amber Heard's attorney throughout the trial. We saw him there with Elaine, but Amber Heard also hired Ballard and Spar, the lawyers there, to be her appellate attorneys. And as we know, she let go of Elaine Bredehoff for the appeals process. Now, Ballard and Spar's lawyers are new to the case, which means that they have to go through thousands and thousands of documents to get up to speed for the appeal. This is not new or uncommon for them, I would assume, because they are an appeals firm. But the fact remains that there are thousands of documents that they have to make sure they review thoroughly and cite in their opening brief. That's why they wanted an extension of time so they can be better prepared in writing that opening brief. I would not be surprised if that was one of the reasons that Amber Heard's lawyers mentioned or argued to the Court of Appeals when they requested the extension of time. In addition to requesting additional time to file her opening brief, Amber Heard's lawyers also requested the Court of Appeals for more page limit for their opening briefs. As I mentioned earlier, the original page limit is 50 pages. So they have to cram 16 assignment of errors arguments in 50 pages. What Amber Heard's lawyers did is they requested the Court of Appeals for 10 more pages. Therefore, they were asking the Court of Appeals for 60 pages for their opening brief. Why would they do that? That's because, again, they had 16 assignment of errors that they want to go ahead and discuss in their opening briefs. Even with the additional 10 pages that they're requesting, I don't think that's enough pages to cover 16 assignment of errors. That's why I believe that Amber Heard's lawyers will actually not put all 16 assignment of errors in their opening briefs and most likely list all 16 just to make sure they cover all of their bases and they will probably pick and choose among those 16 as to their strongest argument to actually put in their opening brief.
What was the Court of Appeals response to Amber Heard's request for an extension of time to file her opening brief and her request for additional 10 pages for her opening brief? Let's go ahead and take a look at what the Court of Appeals filed. As you will see, this is the ruling from the Court of Appeal. It says, on October 13, 2022, came appellant by counsel, an appellant is Amber Heard here, and filed a motion praying that the court grant her an extension of time to file an opening brief and permit her to file an opening brief that exceeds the 50-page limit by 10 pages. Thereupon came the appellee by counsel that refers to Johnny Depp and filed a response in opposition there too. That means Johnny Depp filed an opposition to Amber Heard's request for extension of time and additional page limit. Upon consideration whereof an extension of time is granted to appellant to Amber Heard until November 23rd, 2022 to file the opening brief and leave is granted her to file a 55-page opening brief in this case. What that means is instead of her opening brief due on November 2nd as the original deadline, it is now due on November 23rd. All also, with her request for an additional 10 pages, the Court of Appeal only approved extra 5 pages for her opening brief. Here's a practice tip for those lawyers out there listening or those who want to be a lawyer. You always ask the court for more than what you think they'll grant. For example, here, Amber Heard's lawyers asked for 10 more pages, knowing that they will probably not be granted the entire 10 pages. It is very seldom that I see that the court actually gives them what they actually ask. That's why you ask for more pages, knowing that the court won't give you all 10 pages and here we see that the court gave them only five pages extra the court of appeals would not want to read more than 55 pages they are not interested in reading a book they have a lot of other opening briefs and other appeals that they have to read and consider remember in my other youtube video i mentioned that virginia just had a new rule for january 1st 2022 of this year and that new rule means that people can appeal now by right instead of appealing by filing a petition and seeing if they could get heard in the Court of Appeal. Because now appealing by right is much easier to be heard on the Court of Appeals in Virginia. I've been getting questioned as to whether it's a good thing for Amber Heard that she received an extension of time and additional five pages. Does that mean it's a bad thing? for Johnny Depp? Not necessarily, and here's why. I think that whenever you request a court for anything, whatever that might be, it is a combination of strategy and mind game in litigation. Let me explain why. As to strategy, I discussed earlier the three reasons why Amber Heard's lawyers likely requested for the extension of time. One, it's not uncommon. Two, they need more time because they just got hired as the new appellate attorney. Three, they have 16 assignment of errors that they need to address, so way much more than the three assignment of errors that Johnny Depp has. As to the mind game, what I mean about that is this. It's actually favorable for Johnny Depp that he filed his opening brief on time on November 2nd. The reason is because filing on time shows everyone, the court, and even your opposing party, Amber Heard and her lawyers, that Johnny Depp and her lawyers are on top of things, they are prepared, and they are ready to go it's done. So they don't have to worry about their opening briefs and they can focus on other things that are needed for this appeal. So even though that they already filed their opening brief and Amber Heard is getting additional time to file her opening brief, it's not necessarily an advantage for Amber Heard because she is now behind in terms of they are still working on the opening brief while Johnny Depp is done with his opening brief and can focus on other things things for the appeal. Another big thing about the mind game is this. I believe that less is more. Yes, less is more. 
just because Amber Heard requested 10 pages and was granted five additional pages for her opening brief, that does not necessarily mean that she will have a better argument. No, not exactly. If you look at Johnny Depp's brief, it's actually 35 pages only. He did not even use the full 50 pages page limit. And that page 35 is even the certificate of Ben Chu, which is the certificate of Ben Chu saying that the words and the page number and the page limit comply with the requirements for the opening brief. That's how strict Court of Appeals is. And even the Supreme Court as to the page number, the font, the number of characters required in their opening brief so that people don't try to use smaller fonts and cram everything. If you say, oh, your limit is 50 pages, all right, then my margin will be zero. So I can cram all of my arguments there. No, it doesn't work that way. There are strict requirements as to the margins, the font that you can use, the font size, the spacing, and the number of characters that you have. And that's the certification that Ben Chu signed to accompany the opening brief. And Amber Heard's side will similarly make that certification. And because less is more, what I mean about that is this. I'm a believer that if you are prepared, if you understand the concept, then you can translate that in writing or even an oral argument in a very clear and precise language. I'm still a practicing attorney. So as an example, I win my cases and my hearings because I file less than my opposing counsel. If they file the 10 page motion and I have to file a motion, my motion is generally five pages. And it's very simple, which is here's my argument, here's my support, and this is why I win. Instead of saying rambling things to just make it fluffy and make it sound more legal Legalese. I think you know what I'm talking about when you look at a document from a lawyer and you're thinking, what exactly are you trying to say as opposed to just making it sound like English, right? There's so many here for, therefore, wherefore. So those types of arguments are not exactly persuasive. Before we move on, let me know in the comments below where you're watching from. I always love knowing where my viewers are watching from and to give you guys a shout out. I mentioned that I'm a believer that if you know your position and your facts and your law, all you have to say is, this is my position, this is the supporting fact, this is the supporting law, therefore I win. So most of my cases, the judge would say, I understood that real fast, yes, you win. So that is what we will see and what we can anticipate in Johnny Depp's opening brief. And I've reviewed it and I have to say that their opening brief of 35 pages actually are very concise, very precise. There's no run on sentences and there's no typos. Everything is professional as we would have expected because we already saw that at trial and Johnny Depp and his lawyers are very consistent with that kind of professionalism. What are the new deadlines now for Amber Heard? For those of you who are marking your calendars, here are the deadlines for Amber Heard's briefs. For her opening brief, it is now due on November 23rd. For Johnny Depp's response to Amber Heard's opening brief, it is now due on December 23rd, 2022, because the rule requires him to file a response within 30 days. And Amber Heard's reply is now due on January January 6, 2023. Wow, I can't believe it's 2023 already. But Amber Heard's reply is her reply to Johnny Depp's response to her opening brief. So as you can see, there's an arrow going up there, always leading to the opening brief. What was Johnny Depp's lawyer's response to Amber Heard's request for an extension of time? I mentioned earlier that they opposed her request for extension of time, but even with their opposition, the Court of Appeals granted it. After the Court of Appeals granted Amber Heard's request for extension of time, they in turn, meaning Johnny Depp's lawyers, requested the Court of Appeals for an extension of time as well to file their reply to Amber Heard's opening brief. In addition to asking for an extension of time as well, Johnny Depp's lawyers also asked the Court of Appeals for additional page limits. 
here, Johnny Depp is the appellee because Amber Heard is the appellant. So in this case, Johnny Depp's brief will be due 30 days after Amber Heard files her opening brief on November 23rd. Johnny Depp is asking for more time than 30 days. Also, because Amber Heard requested additional pages and was granted 55 pages, Johnny Depp is also requesting additional page limit. As an appellee, Johnny Depp also has 50 pages as a page limit so that he would have 50 pages to respond to Amber Heard's 55 pages. What was the Court of Appeals response to Johnny Depp's lawyer's request? Let's go ahead and check that out. Here's the letter to Ben Chu by the Court of Appeals of Virginia, and it says, Disacknowledge receipt of your motion for an extension of time to file an appellate's brief and leave to exceed the page limit in this case. However, pursuant to Rule 5A19B2, the appellate's brief, meaning Johnny Depp's brief, is not due to be filed in the office of the clerk of this court until 30 days after the filing of the opening brief by Amber Heard. The appellant, aka Amber Heard, has not yet filed the opening brief in this case. Thus, no due date has been established for the filing of the appellant's brief. That means that because Amber Heard has not filed her opening brief, the 30-day is not yet triggered for Johnny Depp to file his appeal. That's because Amber Heard, even though she's given up to November 23rd to file her opening brief, she can file it on November 20th or November 19th, we just don't know. But whenever she files it, that's when the 30 days kicked in for Johnny Depp's deadline. That's why the court says, accordingly, the court will not take any action on your motion. For now, they're not going to do anything with their motion because it's not applicable yet. And in the next paragraph, they say, please note that once the appellant, Amber Heard, files her brief, the due date for the filing of the appellant's brief, of Johnny Depp's brief, will be established. If at that time, you determine that you need additional time and pages to respond to such brief, you can file a motion for the court's consideration. That gives Johnny Depp's lawyers more guidance from the court saying that once Amber Heard files her opening brief and then Johnny Depp's lawyers read it and they determine, yeah, you know what, we need more time and we need more pages, then they can go ahead and ask for more time and more pages. They have the right to do that. Whether or not it'll be granted, it's not guaranteed, but I anticipate that it will be granted as well. Similarly, how Amber Heard's request was granted. I know I mentioned that there are strict rules about the page limit and what's included in it. The rules about this, this what seems to be a technicality, right? Like form over substance, but form and substance is very important for courts, especially higher courts like the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court. I wanted to just show you this rule just because so you can better understand what I'm talking about, how strict they are. Rule 5A19A regarding length. Let's read it together. It says that except by permission of a judge of this court, which means unless you ask the court, neither the opening brief of the appellant nor the brief of the appellee may exceed the longer of 50 pages or 12,300 words. That's why Ben Chu had to certify that his page limit is less than 12,300 words. And then it says, no reply brief may exceed the longer of 20 pages or 3,500. And then if you go down to the page and word limits, it says page and word limits under this rule do not include appendices, the cover page, the table of contents, the table of authorities, signature blocks, or certificate. Can you imagine they had to put that all in there and they had to add the signature block in there because it's been a contention as to whether or not in the old rule, ooh, you heard that thunder, it's raining right now here in Texas. In the old rule, it didn't say anything about the signature block. And so people are asking, well, the 50 page limit, does that include the signature block? And you're like, why is that a big deal? It's a signature block. Because if you look at Johnny D. 
depth brief right here, the signature block is long because it lists all of the names of the attorneys, their addresses, their phone information, their email. So it takes about a page for a signature block. And if you have more arguments that you want to cram in there, you want to know is a signature block part of the 50 page limit. So that question has been resolved by the new rule of Court of Virginia by adding that line there saying the signature block or the certificate are not included in the page limit. So there you go. Most of you are asking about the strict rules, but there are strict rules about form and also substance. So make sure here's a practice tip for those lawyers and aspiring lawyers out there. Make sure you read the rules because if you miss something, as I mentioned in my other video, it might just cause a dismissal of your case, even though it's a technicality that you believe is a technicality but according to the rules, they are not and they're mandatory. Always read the rules. Since deadlines when you're practicing lawyer is very important. In fact, we actually stay up late at night or even wake up in the middle of the night thinking that we missed a deadline. Let's talk about the deadlines now for both Johnny Depp and Amber Heard regarding their respective opening briefs. As I mentioned earlier, Amber Heard's opening brief is now due on November 23rd. Johnny Depp's response to Amber Heard's opening brief is due on December 23rd. And Amber Heard's reply to Johnny Depp's response is due on January 6, 2023. Now, in terms of Johnny Depp's appeal, his opening brief was timely filed on November 2nd. That means that Amber Heard's response to Johnny Depp's opening brief is now due on December 2nd. And Johnny Depp's reply to Amber Heard's response is due on December 16. So as you can see, Amber Amber Heard's opening brief is due on November 23rd, and then her response to Johnny Depp's opening brief is due on December 12th. So she's going to have a lot going on and a lot of argument that they have to write on her behalf at such a small time crunch because they requested that extension of time. So that's another strategy to keep in mind as well, especially when you have two appeals going on simultaneously paralleling each other. Now that the opening briefs are being filed, or John Depp already filed his, and Amber Heard will be filing her suit, and the rest of the briefs will be coming in by December and January, it's very important for you to get up to speed as to the different terminologies for appeals. In my other video, I talk about the different terminologies so that when someone is talking about the appeals process or what the court is doing, it's easier for you to understand and it's easier for you to explain to your friends what is going on. So go ahead and check out that other video. Before we move on, if you can go ahead and click that subscribe button, did you notice that YouTube changed the subscribe button from red to white and now it also have a curved corner. So go ahead and click that white subscribe button. It will really help my channel so that I can go ahead and create more videos like this for you and for others. Also, let me know if you have any questions or other videos that you'd like me to create for you. I will be definitely creating a video about the insurance lawsuits, you know, between the insurance companies of Amber Heard, New York Marines and Travelers. I have a video about that as part one. I was going to do the part two, but the appeals process kicked in and I had to do this instead. And then I will be talking about Johnny Depp's opening brief as well and breaking that down for you. And I anticipate we'll be talking about Amber Heard's opening briefs as well. But if there are any any other legal analysis that you'd like me to provide, please go ahead and say that in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer and do that video for you. Thank you. Bye.